Hi everyone, this is Lauren uh, with Leatherati.com and I'm privileged to be here this evening with uh, Sir Stephen. Uh, Sir Stephen, how are you tonight? I'm fine, thank you. Excellent, thank you for taking the time to, uh, to do some interviewing with us. Right now, please. Good, uh, so we're, we talked a little bit with Master Taino about this new project, but before we get into that, can you tell us a little bit about your position with MTTA and with MSC? And I know you wear a lot of hats, just give us an idea about what you do with these organizations. Sure. I am the secretary for MTTA and board member of MTTA, one of the uh, line members on uh, I'm also an associate producer for the Master Slave Conference. Uh, and uh, as such, I have various responsibilities. Uh, mostly, though, I just do whatever Master Slave you know, is necessary. <laughs> Which I think is true of all the board members. <laughs> That's probably the most direct way to get things done to his satisfaction, I'm sure. Exactly. <laughs> now, one of the things that uh, he and I were speaking of uh, last night was this uh, notion that since 2006, the, uh, the um, you know, history and gathering history and presenting history uh, has been a big part of Master Slave Conference, increasing part of it. And can you tell us a little bit about your efforts to preserve history and present history? I know you've got a new project underway. Right, well, the, the Master Slave History Project uh, evolved out of, first of all, it's a book project. We, we are, uh, we're not envisioning at the moment anything grander than that. Um, the book will be basically an anthology format with soliciting contributions from a significant number of uh, sort of well known individuals in the Master Slave History. Um, and asking them to contribute on certain particular topic areas. Um, and that is being handled by or separately by, by the editor on the project. The, the reason that we felt this was, the time for this had, had uh, come up on the horizon was that the master slave community has, of course, over the past, certainly over the past decade and longer, um, Grown larger and larger. I mean, it's, it's grown larger and larger as these things do in sort of organic, ad hoc fashion, with no particular focus really. Uh, people just sort of identifying as masters and coming in. And uh, in the community, there was a very large um, uh, uh, emphasis placed on our leather roots and. There had, there was to a large extent a, a probably not intentionally, but but there was a, a to a large extent impression created that the master slave community was a subset of the leather community, right. and that our history therefore was subsumed as as a part of leather history. Um, and uh, as the community has grown and expanded and become clear that there are other uh, uh, other cultural factors feeding into the community and providing roots, as it were, for the master slave community for the diverse uh, set of associated cultural origins. Um, it became it began to become clear that, as I say, because the community has grown and evolved, because uh, as that happened, uh, more and more disparate elements uh, came became visible, uh, it became clear that, that our community would be served by some effort to begin to uh, formally present our history as unique from the histories of other uh, components of the broader, however you want to think of it, BDSM or the multi lifestyle or whatever, communities that sure. represented a, a separate a separate thing with our own, with our own history. So right. that's sort of how that evolved. There is there is a distinct history there, and it's uh, it is different. You're right; it has been seen as part of the larger leather community. But it's, it's nice to see you pulling it out and highlighting that because there is a very unique history involved there. Now, I, I understand you have uh, uh, David Stein involved with this project as well. Yes, that's correct. David Stein is acting as a sort of liaison between us and the, the editor, a uh, gentleman named Peter Tucker, who is in the lifestyle, uh, not necessarily the MS lifestyle. The uh, broader BDSM lifestyle, uh, but he has experience as a writer and as a historian. So he brings he brings a good 
tool set to, to this project. Uh, and David is sort of acting as a, a friend of both parties, a friend mm -hmm. of both MPA and to Peter Rietti. Well, David certainly has a deep history in the MS, MS lifestyle, so he's a, he's a good resource for you to have. Yes, absolutely. Now, what can we expect to see on the finished product? I mean, what's the, uh, pardon the pun here, what's the tone of the tome going to be? The tone of the tome, uh, where, where it is, is sort of yet to be decided, and there's, there's some internal discussion on it. I personally am in favor of a more scholar or an academic book. Um, I, whether we will achieve that in an anthology format remains to be seen. Anthology formats tend towards the more anecdotal. So I think we're going to see some, a combination of both. Uh, I think that, that the segments, for example, being prepared by Peter, uh, and they've also solicited a segment from me, I think those will be more scholarly, and not, you know, not that I'm a, personally a historian, but that they will be have a more scholarly tone. But that some of, a lot of the other contributions will be along the lines of, well, I was there in the 70s when this happened. I was there and I saw this. And so uh, there'll be a, a, a mixture of that sort of more sort of academic approach and the more personal mm. anecdotal. I, I think that makes sense. We have a lot of, of handed down information, uh, hearsay, you know, first person details. Things like that. A lot of storytelling goes on in our community. I don't mean storytelling like in, as in telling lies or anything. I mean storytelling as in telling how it used to be or how it was. Right. So it makes it interesting to, to, to have enough quantifiable data at, at your hand to be able to you know, even come up with part of it being a more scholarly issue. We are very hopeful that will happen. And in fact, what we have been able to do uh, is to trace back the roots, historical roots, of consensual MS relationships back to, at the very least, the Victorians. There is a documented uh, history, of not, a, not, a, not a fictional history, but an actual set of uh, real-world diaries that were written by a woman named Hannah Colwick, who was the slave to Arthur London, and they maintained a relationship of 25 years or so. And uh, they identified as master and slave. This, this, as I say, took place back in the, okay, well, there was the 1850s, but sometime in the Victorian. Mm -hmm. So you're not strictly sticking with modern times. You're going back really in, into our deep, dark past to look for for these uh, for these uh, for these facts and these stories. Yeah, we, we, again, we really hope to because again, if we're going to say that you are something. Um, that we have, we have a unique identity separate from the other community. Presumably, we, we started somewhere else. And as it happens, we're very fortunate to have this one historical document that clearly establishes that. We'd love to get more information. Um, and, uh, and Peter is digging into that. Uh, Peter, when he was at the Masters, this is an aside. It has nothing to do with this conversation directly. But Peter, when he was presented at the Masters State Conference, I would sort of love here by Johnson's level of leather library. Um, he was in seventh heaven as a as a historian and researcher. He was just over the moon to be exposed to the material that I had with her at the conference. So he's been thinking more deeply into this than, than I have, and he may discover other historical source material that I'm not aware of. But as I say, uh, this this the existence of these diaries. Excuse me. Is to me a, a very exciting find, um, and uh, uh, again, I'll plug things that are available on Amazon. <laughs> Connect to a person, the diaries are kind of cool. Um, uh, so yeah, that, that, that's what we're up to. What is your uh, what is your, your your timeline for this? When can we expect to see the, the uh, finished product? We are hoping to complete the project by the end of 2014. We have to go publish in 2000. What do you, uh, for you personally, what will be a success with this? In all honesty, a success will be to get it done, and I'm not being I'm not being glib about that. Um, the master slave community is, let's be honest, relatively small. This is not this book is not going to can't imagine this book will evolve into some sort of bestseller that's going to sell millions of copies. I. I be very pleased if uh, 
if it, if it sells hundreds or even a thousand copies, I would be uh, even more pleased if people in the community begin to do it as a as a reference, as a true history of our community, the MS community, and begin to talk about it uh, in their local groups and again the larger conferences and begin to uh, uh, evolve from this sense of connectedness to our history, sense of pride in who we are, and, and a greater sense of where we come from, and are able to incorporate that historical information into what we do moving forward. That would be the greatest value. And, and speaking of publishing, what format are you going to publish in? Strictly uh, print, or are you also going to offer a digital version? Um, again, I think that, that remains to be negotiated with the publisher, and we have to reach the final arrangement with him. Um, originally, I think certainly we're going to craft with the part, um, and then the issue of whether we'll send it with the as well or the digital version has not yet been resolved. And are, are you partnering with the uh, Leather Archives Museum and the, and the uh, Leather Library for this, or, or is this a, a strictly a solo project? This is this really is an FTTA project. We will, of course, um, hopefully make use of the resources that are available, both the Leather Archives and the Leather Library. Um, again, their focus being on on the leather community, leather history. Um, one, what I'm hoping is. There's actually a lot of master slave material that they possess, but doesn't necessarily come to the fore because that's not specifically the focus of what they're trying to preserve. Sure. And I'm, I'm kind of hoping that the rummage around there, we may find things that they, they themselves may not even be aware because I know they receive large bulks of material, and I'm not sure that everything gets cataloged. Yet. I have a feeling this project may add a few more gray hairs somewhere in there, so. I, I, I'm afraid that it shall. Oh, by the way, Master Taino told me that you're going to do all the work and he's going to take all the accolades, so that's how that's how that's going to work. <laughs> well, I, I was, I was for many years, a very close friend of uh, Master Jack George, and, um, and interestingly enough, that's exactly how he utilized me as well, so it's okay. <laughs> and I'm joking, Master Taino did not say that. He had nothing but the highest praise for your, uh, for you taking on this project. I, I think he was. Uh, I think he maybe a, feel a little bit sorry for you, but that's okay. That's that's another that's another topic. So, well, Sir Stephen, uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, last year was my first Master Slave Conference, and I, I thought you guys did a wonderful job at it. Looking forward to being back next year, and I'm looking forward to seeing this project as it goes along. Thank you very much. As as switching hats now, as the conference, I'm very pleased to hear you say that. I'm always glad to hear the conference has been a positive experience. For you. And I, that that one, in all seriousness, that really is to the credit of Master Tyan. He really, uh, he really had the vision for that, and he really has uh, stayed true to that vision and consistently uh, brought the rest of us along to produce what we believe is, is as an educational event of, of unusual talent. Well, as you can imagine, we, we for Leatherati, we attend a lot of events, and I will tell you this, that, that was one of the most uh, seamlessly run and smooth, smoothly run events I've, I've, I've attended. The quality of the classes and the caliber of the people uh, instructing those classes was par none. I've never seen a, a better faculty gather together, and I was very impressed. It was a, it's a, it's a top-notch event from beginning to end, so you guys should, you deserve a pat on the back for that. Thank you. On behalf of myself and the, the other individuals involved. Well, Sir Stephen, thank you so much for taking the time. I know it's a busy time of year getting ready for Thanksgiving tomorrow, but I really appreciate the time to sit and talk with us about this. And I'll, I'll look forward to catching up with you more as this progresses. Very good, yeah. I look forward to it. Hopefully you'll be at the conference, and at the very least we can talk more about it then. I should have a great deal more to be able to, to report to you. That'd be great. Thank you very much. All right. Have a lovely Halloween. Thank you. You too.